All right, in this video, this is going to be, um, I'm excited about this one. Uh, Carla Jacobs and Frank, uh, Frank the developer, Frank Monza, uh, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but um, they're, they're some code masters, I'll tell you what. And, uh, Carla shared this code with me. Um, Frank uh, generated the idea, and this is going to be the fix to this video here where um, a slideshow on your custom live wallpaper if you've been watching this on your computer you've seen that I've made some comments um, some people say the code doesn't work well this is a fix to that but hey don't stop watching the video now um, whether you want to do this or not because trust me <laughs> this is really cool and this will really open up some doors um, in terms of your uh, custom live wallpaper making now, um, what I have here is I have the picture changing. I have it changing every a certain number of seconds, and I have it scrolling through whatever I want. And then also for another video later on down the road, if you look at this square up here, you may notice, you may not notice, but this thing is just changing. The tint to it, every once in a while it might jump to a totally different color, but as you can see here, this box is definitely changing colors. And uh, yeah, that's going to be another video, but I do want to talk about what's going on like you know how is this image changing and um i guarantee you this is going to work now so if you've watched this video here make sure you have watched it to get the idea of how to you know copy your file path how to name your pictures correctly and uh th this new way of doing it really works cool and plus it's going to open up more doors for other things like i said now before we jump into it let me talk about a few things and i had this crazy excel file opened up right here now grab your calculator if you like but if we take this number here if we divide it by whatever number I type in here so one one thousand one divided by four we get something like that if we want to round this thing it's gonna be that numbers go around to 250 and then this is like the modulo or the mod um, if we, the remainder we get when we divide by five, well, if you take 250 divided by five, you will get a remainder of zero, okay? And then I come back here and I time this remainder plus one. So if I take that remainder and I add one to it, I get one. Okay, let's look at another example, 1,002. So 1,002 divided by four will be 250.5. If we round that, that will round up to 251. What remainder do we get when we divide by 5? That remainder will be 1 because 251 divided by 5 is going to be something with a remainder of 1. So again, on this last column here, whenever we add 1 to this, remainder plus 1, notice we get 2. All right, here's what's cool about this. You might say, okay, what are these numbers here? Um, well, let's look and see if we see some patterns um, before I start talking about these numbers. Okay, look over here. See, notice how we have a couple of twos. Notice how we have some threes. Notice how we have some fours. Notice how we have some fives. And then notice how we go back to ones. Do you see how we have the same number of twos, threes, fours, and fives showing? And basically, it's running that same formula. You take this number, you divide by whatever number you have here, you want to round it, and then you want to figure out what remainder you get when you divide by a certain number. Here's what's cool about this. Watch what happens if I change these things, and let's see if we notice the pattern changes. Let's look at the pattern over here. Um, I see ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives, and each number occurs. Now, you might say there's only one one there, but that's just where I started this thing. But notice each number occurs one, two, three, four times, one, two, three, four times, and so forth. Notice these two numbers I have here. Boom, boom. Let's divide this thing by seven. All right. And what remainder do we get when we divide by, let's say, 9? All right, what's going to happen here? Check it out. Let's look and see where we start at 1s. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Hmm, notice something? Let me change this. And notice all of them are going to do that. Maybe if you didn't see the pattern, but look at the twos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Threes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You might say, okay, how far does this thing go? Remember the other number when we talked about a remainder? The remainder we get when we divide by nine. Well, watch what happens. When we get down here to nine, boom, look, it resets and my screen's still scrolling, but nonetheless, when it hits nine, it resets back to one. Are you starting to get the idea of what this thing really does? 
uh, let's divide by three, all right? What this number here is going to do is going to determine how many times that number shows up. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let me change this to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, the remainder we get when we divide by nine, we can divide by whatever we want. We can divide by, I mean, you can have them both being the same. We'll divide by three. What happens here? Okay. Four. One, two, three, four. Dividing by three, or the remainder we get when we divide by three. Notice it goes ones, twos, threes, resets. Ones, twos, threes, resets. So hopefully, I uh, hopefully you get the idea of what these two numbers do. Now, why? What's so important about this? Well, imagine this thing over here. These funky numbers being seconds. So think of it as 1,001 seconds, 1,002 seconds, 1,003 seconds, 1,004 seconds, and so forth. Well, every time when we type this code in KLWP, we're going to get one of these numbers out of it. All right. So basically, you can say, all right, I want my picture to show up for six seconds. That's what we'd want to put right there. Well, notice whatever picture we had named one, it would last for one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. And then it would go to picture number two. One, two, three, four, five, for six seconds. Remember, I said all these things over here, think of them as being seconds. I hope that makes sense. Now, you might say, well, hey, okay, I got more than three pictures. Well, let's change this number here. Suppose you have 20 pictures. Boom. Now, um, Every six seconds, so let's start where we have a fresh one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Every six seconds, this number is going to change. One, two, three, four, five, six. See what I'm saying? Now, how high will this thing go up to? You got it. It'll go up to 20. The thing is, we have to remember to do this remainder that we get. We have to remember to do the remainder plus one. That way, we're not getting a zero because if we look at all these in this column here, when I go down to 19, it's not going to give me a 20 because if we divide by 20, we can't get a remainder of 20. Think about that. When you divide a number by 20, you can't get a remainder of 20. You either get a remainder of 19 or no remainder because 20 went into it. I hope that makes sense. Now, I like doing this thing of plus one because the way I already had my pictures named, of course, you could easily rename them yourself. But uh, yeah, that's what we can do, and it's easily customizable because if you added more pictures into your folder, suppose you have 100 pictures in your folder, well, you can count up to 100, and you can repeat this after any number of seconds, after six seconds. I could do this every two seconds. If I did that, notice every two seconds, one second, two seconds, then three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. I hope this is making sense now. Um, about how you can run this thing. Now, how in the world do we get these numbers? Well, I learned about this yesterday, and boom, here's what I did. Okay, there is a code in KLWP. For those of you who code quite a bit, you probably already know this, but I sure didn't. Um, there is this thing called Unix time or Epoch time, where basically on January 1st, 1970, um, they started this counter that counted the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. Of course, this is from Wikipedia, so I don't know how much we can trust that, but basically there's been a lot of seconds since then. And this seconds is going to continue climbing. It's never going to go back to zero. So, you know, upon looking at this, when I pull this web page up, let me refresh it. This number right here is going to change probably. Um, no, it didn't. But nonetheless, this will change. Um, and it's going to change. It's going to go up one second for now to the rest of our life. I mean, for the rest of your life and until after you're gone, your next generation's gone, whatever, this number is going to keep on climbing. So we can divide this number by whatever we want. We can round it. We can uh, find a remainder when we divide by something else, all that stuff. And that's how this is tied into this. This is like my epoch time. So with all that said, a little math lesson there for you. Let's go into KLWP and actually have a look. All right, I'm going to switch over so I can use my finger some if I need to. Now, in a future video, I'll be talking about how to do this same type of coding to change colors. But notice, I want to focus on the wallpaper and to show you how to type that code in. So um, quick recap on what I did in the old video. 
you add a shape, you go to FX, and then you know I have it coded to where the file path on my SD card, wherever my pictures are, and I had those pictures numbered 1 through 12. So notice the code I have here. I want to round DFS. Ooh, time out. Let me, talk, let me show you what DF capital S is. That is the epoch time that I was talking about. So boom, let me add some text. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And here comes DF capital S. Check out that number. <laughs> That's how many seconds it's been, and this thing will always continue to climb. Notice it is going to climb forever and ever and ever. It's never going to reset to zero because we all know number, numbers never end. We can add as many digits as we want. So it's been what? Here's three, six, nine. Okay, so it's been um, almost one and a half billion seconds since 1970. Okay, that's good to know. But uh, there we go. So that's the DF capital S. What is DF capital S? How is that used in this picture code again? Let me go back to that. And boom. So we're going to take the number of seconds. We're going to divide. Notice, okay, divide by what? We divided by two over here on Excel. I'm dividing by five. Whatever number you divide by here is how long each thing is going to last. So notice over here, um, when I divided by two, everything occurred in pairs. So every two seconds. Well, here this is changing every five seconds. And then here is your remainder thing, the modulo. It's the percent symbol. So basically, whatever it gets when it divides the epoch time divided by whatever number you pick there, it's going to take that and it's going to um, divide by 12 and it's going to get its remainder. So that's going to be this column here that it's going to be spitting out. And then I'm going to add one to it. And the only reason why I add one is because I have my pictures in my folder numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I don't have a zero, so I always want to get a number that's 1, 2, 12. I hope that makes sense. Just to show you that, let me pull up um, the folder that I have them in. Notice I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then there's 10, 11, 12. I could easily rename this to zero, one of those to zero or whatever but I chose not to. It's worth mentioning to you that you can just add one to it and that'll bypass zero every single time. But that's your fix. And now, I don't know if you were actually counting. I'll tell you what, let me check this, let me save this and show you how easy it is to, um, so one, two, three, okay, well let's see, it's gonna probably reset. One, two, three, four, five, it should be changing, two, three, four, five. See how it's changing every five seconds? Well, let's go into KLWP. And let me go in here and change this code. If I want it to change every single second, we can divide by one, just like that. Watch this, checking it. Notice where I put that one in at. I put that one right after I take the epoch time divided by how many or how long do you want each picture to last in this case? So check it and let's go back and see if it is changing. It looks like it is. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? And what it's doing here is it's going through 12 pictures. And see, now, now there's a little glitch maybe because who wants to, I mean, if you want to change something every second, so be it if you want to change a picture. But uh, let's count and let me show you one more thing before you go. So starting with the skull, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, and then it should reset back to the skull. Now, which picture did I have actually labeled as one? Um, okay, the colorful squares. I'll tell you what, let's wait till we get to the colorful squares. I want to show you what something else I can do. All right, colorful squares, where are you? Any day now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then it's going to reset. Okay. Now, if we go into KLWP, let me go change my code a little bit more just to show you what this can do. If, if you're still kind of having a little bit of trouble grasping this, um, we'll go into the 
picture FX and let's change this code. Suppose I didn't want to see all 12 pictures or suppose you added 20 pictures or suppose you only had five pictures or four or whatever. I'm going to change this. Notice what I'm not, I'm not changing the one. I'm still going to change every one second. But now I want the remainder when we divide by, let's say, four. Now what this is going to do is only going to return a one, a two, a three, or a four. Because remember, we're adding one to our remainder. So let me save this and go back to the home screen. Let's see what happens. Should only be four pictures. One, two, three, four, and then it resets. Bam, there you go. So now it's not, once you get past the barrier of trying to understand what this code really does, once you understand what epoch time is and, and really what we're doing in here, um, it does make uh, editing that code a lot easier because you can change the amount of time you want each piece to show and you can even add numbers in here if you start adding more pictures. Now with all that said, there is a lot more that you can do with uh, this code, um, DFS divided by, and all this stuff that I've talked about. Um, this square up here that's been changing colors the whole time I've been sitting here talking. Um, we can actually apply this to color codes, and that's pretty sweet. But I will save that for another video. This is your fix to have a wallpaper on your uh, custom live wallpaper preset. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.